Okay, uh, let's get this started. We are going to talk about undirected graphical model in this class. So, a little bit of uh, announcement for now. So, as you know, the deadline for homework zero is today. And uh, we don't accept any late homework. Hopefully, you, are, you guys are all on time. Uh, the next session uh, will be uh, so. In the next session, we are going to have Dr. Kung Zhang talking about causal graphical model. Uh, any other announcement? So I just sent an email about um, the describe duty, and um, hopefully soon, RTAs are going to uh, have an announcement about the details of the project. So let's get it started. Uh, so let's review the material we discussed last time about directed graphical model. In the last session, we talked about the representation, the factorial representation of multivariate uh, distribution that, that is represented by the DGM. So we mentioned that uh, the joint probability distribution that is induced by the graph can be written as a factor in, in, in a factorized form that the the joint conditional uh, the CPD of x i given its parents that here is pi is representing its parents I guess in the last class we show it as P A of x i um, uh, is basically fully characterized the joint distribution we talked about the local conditional probability uh, dependencies. And um, we mentioned that each variable is, co uh, is conditional independence of its non-descending variable. So if I have a variable, if I have a graph, the DGM graph, and start uh, assigning a number to a node uh, in a way that the nodes that are uh, more like a parent of all, all, the, all the nodes get the lower number and as you go down to the bottom of the graph to the to the to the children you get the lower number so some sort of like topological ordering so uh, we can write the local condition dependence as um, so here if let's say this one is x1 x2 x3 and um, so on and so forth so if this is let's say x4 the parents of x4 are uh, basically x2 and x3. Um, so conditioning on on the parents uh, of this node x, x4, uh, the the non descending uh, the non descending nodes of of the x4 this graph continues, um, or conditional independence condition on parents of this guy. Uh, these are all of the, the topics about conditional independence that we discussed last time. We also talked about uh, CPT, uh, uh, conditional property table. Here I'm showing you a graph of six variables, x1 through x6, and um, we show you an example of discrete random variables and we showed that how we can represent the, the CPDs or CPTs if they are discrete as a table or tensors so here for example x6 um, here is uh, dependent on two random variables x2 and x4 so this is why to represent the two binary so here I'm assuming that x6 all the random variables take two values x 0 and 1 is binary. So um, the, the CPD uh, of x6 is a tensor because it's dependent on x2 and x5. Uh, so we also discussed the notion of uh, this separation and local conditional independence. Hopefully you remember all of that. We introduced the notion of IMAP. We uh, provide an example that how an I map induced by the by the graph is a subset of the I map induced by the probability distribution. We showed you that we can tweak the numbers in the probability distribution to introduce extra independence. So this is why the I map of the graph is a subset of the I map of the probability distribution. We also show you that 
um, the, the local IMAP is, um, is, is a subset of all of the IMAPs of the, of the, of the graph. So, um, so here is an example that if I have a fully connected graph, the, the IMAP of the graph is empty because it is the most um, general probability distribution. And it's obvious, like, so here, uh, let me give you an example. Let's say that I have four random variables. And so in this part of the graph, I'm not using any assumption. I'm just starting with the chain rule. So no assumption from here. It's just a chain rule. And I, I so I continue. So I chain rule here and then I apply the chain rule here and so on and so forth. So, so far, I'm not making any assumption. So this factorization is equivalent of... Um, connecting all of the nodes with each other so remember that any distribution I can write any distribution like this and uh this is this correspond to a fully connected graph and uh we discussed that basically imap introduce a family of probability distribution and if for this uh this is specific representation that all of the nodes are connected to each other this is the most general form of probability distribution for these four random uh, variables, and it it encounters it basically represents all of the prob uh, all of the, uh, the, the the possible relationship. We also talked about the notion of I equivalence. Um, so if you remember, uh, I gave you this example last time that um, we have these three. Uh, probability graph called models that we have a V structure here, a collider X3, and a common cause, a chain, uh, a chain here, a chain here, and a common cause. And there's a V structure here. And we, uh, I told you that for this specific I map, all of these three are satisfying it. So they are equivalent, but this is different because if I condition on x3, um, x1 and x2 become dependent. Uh, we introduced the, the notion of skeleton of a Bayesian graphical model, which is basically removing the, 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 the arrows uh, from that. So that will bring me to the idea of uh, undirected graphical model. So now the question is that why do we need uh, this new notion, these new families of um, probability distributions uh, that is represented by undirected graph. Why do we need those? So let me give you an example. Let's say that I've given you this patch of image and I'm asking you, is this air or C? So I'm going to show you the context of, uh, of that in an image. So um, this is, let's say that this is representing that a specific patch. And in order to provide a label for this, you need to also incorporate the context of all of the patch around this specific patch. So you just can't look at the location of this patch or the representation of this patch because if you want to look at the blue color, blue color can be air, can be C, you can't rely on the, the location of the patch because well not necessarily all of the patches that are on the top are air in this specific one you have to incorporate all of this in the context to recover the label of this specific patch well so far you have only learned dgm and uh well let's assume that each of these patches that are uh, in this graph are a random variables and take two labels air or c or land, well, three land, uh, three states, and because you have only learned DGM so far, you start connecting them in, uh, arbitrarily. But this doesn't quite make sense because there is no notion of it's not that the label of one patch is caused by the other one, and um, intuitively doesn't make sense. It doesn't look like it's the right model for that. Another application of uh, graphical model is in this case. So let's say that you have two different treatments, T1 and T2, and Y1 and Y2 are status of two diseases. 
and you want to see, so you you basically apply this treatment t1 and t2 and see observe the status of uh these two different uh diseases on the same individual you see that they are related to each other but you don't get to observe this h um you don't even know that it exists so if you don't have that if the h is not observed so you cannot draw a, a graphical model that goes from y1 to y2 or y2 through to y1 because um, none of those are causing the other one. In fact, there is another latent uh, variable that are causing both of them. So not being able to see H or ha have any observation about H is equivalent of fact uh, is integrating H out. And this is why you cannot represent the relationship between y1 as an arrow going from y1 to y2 or other way around. So these are the cases, these are just an example, I'm going to give you more examples down the road, that directed graphical models are not a, a right choice. So, so what is this undirected graphical model? So, unlike, so similar to DGM, the nodes in undirected graphical models are, are the random variables, and edge represents the interaction between the variables. So the difference between UGM, undirected graphical model, and DGM, directed graphical model, is that in DGM, the, the nodes, uh, sorry, the edges are asymmetric. So, so remember in a directed graphical model, oops, so in the directed graphical model, we had um, the CPDs. Um, so let's say X1, X2. And the factorization of this probability distribution is PX2, PX1, PX2, um, so this is asymmetric. Uh, in a sense that I cannot arbitrarily switch the direction of x1 and x2. I'm conditioning on one, evaluating the other one. So this is the asymmetry in the factors of directed graphical models. So unlike that, in the directed graphical model, we have the notion of a symmetry on on the relationship between um, on, 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 on the edges. So. This is why that the pairwise relationship in undirected graphical model cannot be read as, as a causal relationship. Another difference is that usually in, in the undirected graphical model, we don't have the, an explicit recipe for drawing samples. So if you remember in, in the last class, we talk about uh, the, the, the DGM and we, we, we told you that uh, you can view the DGM as a way or as a recipe to generate samples. So let's say that I think I show you this example that is a probability is is a is a DGM defined over uh, three uh, well five uh, random variables x one x two x three x four and x five. And to generate to draw a, a five-dimensional distribution from that uh, probability distribution is just enough to first random from x1, plug that into the CPD and draw random uh, variables from x2 and x3, and then plug x2 to, uh, to CPD of x4 and then draw random variable from this, and substitute x, x3 and x4 and draw uh, random variables, uh, uh, draw uh, the, the sample from X5. So that will give you a five-dimensional uh, uh, sample from uh, this distribution. Unlike that, in UGM, we don't have a, any explicit recipe to do that. So what is UGM, and uh, when should we use it, and what are they good for? So let me give you an ex uh, explicit example. So as I told you, uh, the UGM, you can view it as... A graph that nodes are random variables and edge related to the affinity, which is not causal affinity. And um, so, so let's say that we have a social social network of the graph. So, well, um, this let's say that each 
uh, circles or these random variables is you guys and uh, the, the state is that it, whether you like the homework zero or not. And um, we, we did some survey and a bunch of people said that they liked the homework and um, some of them, they, they said that they, they didn't like it. So the connection that we have between the random variables is here me as an instructor and you have the three TAs. Obviously, they liked the, the, T, uh, the homework because they were the one uh, designing it. And they're talking to me and everybody is talking to, to the TAs and this is why they have the higher age because they're, uh, they're influenced by students and they, they also influence students. And we did a survey and a couple of the students said um, they basically gave us thumbs up. They liked the, the homework. Some of them, they said thumb, thumb down and they said they didn't like it. But we didn't do that for all of the students. Now, let's say that I want to know the opinion of, let's say, Tassilo, whether he liked the homework zero or not. So, all we have from this graph is that we know a bunch of students like the homework. Some of them, we don't know any information. For example, we don't know any, anything about him. And we also don't know anything about me if, he, if I like it. And we also, somebody has given us... Um, information about the the our opinion so let's say that somebody checked us on on facebook and realized that me and tesla don't usually like the same thing so whenever i like something he dislike it and i mean this is not deterministic it's just like mostly we have a negative correlation now the question that we want to answer uh, the query that we have is that what is the probability distribution given all of this correlation that some of those are negative, some of these are uh, positive, and lots of unobserved because our survey was very limited? What is the probability distribution? What is the probability that Tassilo liked the homework? So, in this case, as you see, that CPD, uh, sorry, directed graphical model is not the right choice because we don't have any notion of causality. It's not that I caused Tassilo to hate the homework zero or Tassilo uh, um, makes me to dislike or like the homework. So it's just a correlation. So how can we model such relationship? The relationship that is just agreement or disagreement or affinity and, uh, and, and, and things like that. So directed graphical model is a way to do this. Another very canonical example is in, in the segmentation. Uh, of course, nowadays we have whole different arrays of, of tools for segmentation. But let's, for the sake of uh, class, let's consider this case. So like, this is my input image. I have some super voxelization that sees like a gerrymandering of uh, our states. And we want to uh, associate labels to each of these uh, labels. So we want to say that if this is a grass, if this specific one is a grass or is a cow. So two states. So obviously uh, the super voxels that are around, that are, that are surrounded by, by other uh, super voxels, for example, these are specific super voxels, uh, that are influenced by all of the super voxels around it. So if this is a cow, if, if this is the grass, um, is going to increase the, the probability of the other one. Or if, if for whatever reason, you know that this is, the, this is the cow, 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 and they're surrounded by super voxels that are all say cow, it's very likely that the label of this super voxel also cow. <clears throat> so this is, these are the cases that, uh, that under UGM can be very useful. Another example is in the, in the context of Computational biology, let's say that you have a set of proteins that are physically interacting with each other. And let's say that your collaborator told you and said, like, hey, this is the graph of the protein. I know that I've, I've done some experiment in the lab and I know that they're in interacting with each other. So now let's say that somebody has given you expression of a bunch of those in, in let's say, blood. And now he asks you, well, knowing this, can you give me the, the, the average expression of the, the other one that are unobserved? So you want to incorporate the fact that they're physically interacting with each other into 
your inference about the uh, the, the the expression of the other unobserved uh, expression uh, in the protein. So, for example, if I have um, I have a question about um, the, this protein and all of the protein around it uh, are are observed, and they all the the in a specific condition the the the, the expression of those increases. You, and they're all positively interacting with this protein, you do, you do ex expect the, the interaction of that protein to increase. Another uh, application of um, undercut graph model is in information retrieval. Whenever you have different modalities of information, for example, you have image and text data, and you want to see, uh, you want to retrieve similar data set with, let's say that you, you are given an image and it says that there is a cow, there is a cow uh, running after a horse. And you want to find similar images. So you want to build, uh, you want to view the segments, for example, in the image and the text in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the annotation as a random variables and find a lower dimensional representation that is low dimensional representation is not something that you have observed. This is like a is a, is a is a hidden state of the data of each of these pair image and text, and find another similar uh, representation in, in the data that has a similar signature in the latent space. So it's not that image is causing a, a car running after a horse or other way around or um, it's just the text that, that the annotation that comes with the text are highly correlated with each other, and you want to incorporate that and use the language of uh, graphical model to model it. So, what is the, the exact um, mathematical definition of uh, UGM? So, um, the so let's say that to define UGM over n random variables. Um, so all you need to do is to basically multiply a bunch of numbers, so basically functions of a set of random variables. So, so let me give you an example. So the joint probability distribution of UGM can be written as multiplication of non-negative non so-called potential, which is basically just a function, it's a non-negative function, of over the subset of random variables that are uh, basically the maximal click in your graph. So the definition of maximal click is that um, is, is a subset of random variables that cannot be extended by including extra more adjacent nodes. So I'll show you an example before uh, later on. And of course it's just like a non-negative uh, function multiplied with, by, by each other. It, it doesn't uh, necessarily satisfy uh, the fact that the resulting multiplication is a probability distribution. So to do that, we have to normalize it, and the normalizer is basically ensures that the resulting is is the probability distribution. So this is also referred as a Gibbs distribution. So um, we have so as you as uh, you saw in the previous examples in, in the previous session. Um, we study quite a lot the notion of independence whenever we have undirected directed graphical models. Similarly, we are going to do the same things for uh, directed graphical models. So because the, these uh, independences that are induced by the graph uh, basically uh, characterize the family of distribution induced by that uh, specific graph. So let, let's recap a little bit. Um, you guys probably remember the notion of uh, Markov blanket for Bayesian network. So, um, so here, so um, let's think about uh, the random variable x in the middle of this Bayesian network. Each has two parents, y1 and y2, and the so the, the one that are here are just the ancestor of uh, of x. So the Markov blanket of X are parents, children, and the other parents of that children. 
So what does it mean uh, if, you, if you remember from last time is that the Markov blanket is the set of random variables that if I condition on, I'm going to isolate X from the rest of the variable. We are going to do, we are going to explain similar notion for uh, undirected graphical model. So, um, so let me start first with the notion of global Markov uh, properties. So for any given undirected graphical model, I'm going to, uh, def a, let's assume that uh, A, B, and C are arbitrary sets of um, nodes on that graph. It, they don't have to be different. They don't have to um, cover the entire set. It's just a sub subset of nodes over undirected graphical model. Some of those, is, for example, C can be empty or um, doesn't even have to. It's like any subset of the nodes on your graph. So we say that these subset of nodes are in, subset of nodes indicated by A are independent by subset of nodes represented by B. Condition on C if and only A if C separates A and B from each other. It's basically uh, saying this that um, if I condition on a set C, I cannot pass through, I cannot find a path uh, between A and B that does not go through C. So here is an example. So let's say that I'm defining this as A and I'm defining this as B. If I condition on this set, which is my C, I cannot find any path that does not go through C, right? So, the notion of uh, conditional independence is are quite easier in uh, undirected graphical model. So, the, the notion of the Markov blanket on UGM is basically is that is is, is as follows. So, um, the, the the Markov blanket is basically a set of the nodes that represent. So it basically renders T condition independence of all sets. So it's basically this, that uh, set of all of the nodes that are connected to that node. So if you condition all of the nodes that are connecting those nodes no, to those nodes uh, to the rest of the world, the rest of the random variables, you're going to, you're going to isolate it. So the very simple example of that in this case would be, for example, X5. So X5 is connected to X2, 3, 4, 5, sorry, six and seven. So I'm, if I condition on those set, I'm going to isolate X5 from the rest of the world. To give you example, um, so let's say that um, we have um, uh, seven random variables. We have the notion of pairwise independence, which is basically if there is an arrow between them or not. So this notion, so to, to make it more rigorous, is that um, if the if if there are so the pairwise connection, we can simply say that if I condition on the rest of random variables, can I still say that they are independent or not? So in this case, one and seven, there is no direct arrow between them. If I condition on the rest of the random variables, I cannot see uh, so they are condition independent. So basically, pairwise dependence is that is about whether there is an arrow between them or not. So for the local independence, um, the local independence is about this mark of blanket that I just told you. So for example, x1 is independent of the rest of the variables whenever you condition on their immediate uh, nodes. So if I condition on this immediate node that are immediately connected to the, the random variable one, is going to isolate it from the rest of the world. And the global random variables are uh, basically, the global independence uh, are is the notion that I explained earlier. Uh, so let's go back to our favorite examples about uh, the, 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 the basically the, the, the image segmentation example. Here now, instead of using a directed graph, we are using undirected graph. And now we can ask similar questions. So whether the random variable one and seven are independent given the rest. 
So one and seven are not directly connected. So if I if I condition on the rest of the random variables, I'm gonna isolate one and seven because there's no uh, direct arrow. So this is basically an example of a pair um, uh, dependence. Similarly for two, see that like all of them are coming in the form of, 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 of the pairwise. So one and 20 are not directly connected. So if I condition on the rest of it, uh, I'm gonna make it independent. And But one and two are directly connected. If I even con condition on the rest, they are still condition independent. So this is why it's not true. Um, so similarly for the notion of uh, for the notion of uh, local independence, so the the local the immediate the immediate connection connect, uh, the the nodes that are connecting to x one are x uh, two and x six. So so it's basically if I condition on these two random variables, I'm going to isolate this from the rest of the world. So, so basically, if I condition on x2 and x6, this will become true. Similarly, for 8, if I connect on these four random variables, it's going to isolate x4 from the rest of the world. And this, uh, this is basically an example of pair, pairwise. local and global so one and two which is this case um, and 15 and 20 which is this one uh, they are conditionally independent uh, they are conditionally independent based on what subset so i can use for example this set to make them uh, to isolate them from each other i can use this set to isolate them from each other and so on and so forth so as you can see the no the notion of global independence is more general than local and pairwise so the, this set is uh, has this set and has uh, this set is uh, has this set as well but if you want to go other way around you have to ensure that your probability distribution is not negative and i'm not going to go through the proof of that and if you are interested to see the proof you have to go and look into uh, Daphne, uh, the, the book by uh, daphne kohler and friedman so so far you have seen um directed graphical model and undirected graphical model um, if you remember last time, I gave you an example of going from directed graphical model to undirected graphical model. If you remember, it was uh, it, it involved the procedure of uh, uh, moralization that if I have this graph and x1 and x2 are both parent of x3, so the basic process was that I'm going to remove the arrows. And then I realized that well, this x two and um, x two x one and x two are parents of x three, but they're not connected to each other. So I'm gonna act like a religious fanatic and then connect them and marry them to each other to make this graph moral. So that was basically the procedure of going from UGM, uh, sorry, DGM to UGM. There is also reverse direction that you can go from undirected graphical model to G DGM. It's more much more involved. Um, uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through that, but it's basically called uh, triangula triangularization. Triangulation. Um, so, but overall, in, in the world of graphical model, not all of the, the... There are dependencies that can only be represented by directed graphical model or undirected graphical model. Uh, so... It's not that you can represent any distribution with only directed or undirected graph models. And I'm going to show you uh, all the distribution with directed or undirected graph models. So I'm going to give you some example in the uh, following slides. So 
let's consider this case. Uh, so in this case, I have a graph over four random variables, A, B, C, and D. And as you see, if I condition on B and D, I'm going to block A and C from each other. And if I condition on A and C, I'm going to block D and B from each other. So these are in an in independent set of, uh, of this undirected, undirected graphical model. Now the question is that, can I represent, can I come up with a direct graphical model that has this uh, independence in its IMAP? So let's try one. Um, so here i am just put an arrow in, in some of those. So I just uh, connected A to D, arrow going from A uh, to D and uh, A to B. And I have a collider at C. So if you pay attention, you see that, well, if I condition on B and D, there is, an act, there is no active path going from A to C. So I'm fine with the first one. But if I condition on C, B and D become connected because there is a V structure here. So although I'm fine with the first one, the second one does not follow. So let's try another one. So this is my new attempt. Um, so let's consider this graph. So in this graph, if I condition on B and D, and these two, I cannot go from A to C, so the first one is okay. Um, but what about the second one? If as soon as I'm conditioned on C or A, the other one becomes independent. Another important thing is that if I don't condition on A and C, B and D are conditionally uh, are marginally independent. So, so that is the that is the independence that is here. But not here. So this is an example of to, this is an example that can be represented by UGM, but not DGM. And it shouldn't come as a surprise to you because there is a loop here, and the the DGM are basically uh, so these are these are graphs. So there is no loop in this. So you somehow should give you a, should have uh, some intuition that we would have had a problem. Uh, representing this with DGM. So here's so basically I gave you an example of the UGM cannot be represented by the DGM. What what about other way around? Here is our um, favorite um, simple uh, directed graphical models, which you see it quite a lot as a motif that get uh, that are repeated quite often in the DGM world. So there is no way that I can convert this to a direct graphical model and preserving all of this uh, conditional independence that I have in the directed one. So why is that? Because, well, here an eye map of that is that um, X and Y are independent condition on nothing. While if I condition on Z, X and Y become dependent. Right, so you cannot preserve both of them at the same time because it doesn't matter what what kind of graph you you, you undirected graph you you draw. If you draw it this way, condition on, on this doesn't satisfy the V structure. So if you connect them directly, if you connect them directly, and then you violate this one. So this is an example of the DGM that cannot be represented as UGM. So, um, so we, we keep talking about, so if you remember the, the, the Gibbs distribution that I show you, the, the, basically the factorization form of UGM, it comes as, as, as a form of non-negative function 
that I told you is just a function that applied on the subset of random variables and I call those clicks. So what is this click? So if you remember this this one, so it was it was a bunch of potential functions multiplied with each other and normalized. So here is a couple of examples. So in this graph, so the clicks are maximum clicks are basically uh, a set of a, a pair of probability distributions. So the the joint probability distribution of x1 to x4 is multiplication of pairwise clicks. So I have to mention that like here it doesn't mean that all of these pairs should be the same. It doesn't mean that they all have to be the same thing. They all can be different, although you may choose to set them all equal to save some uh, parameterization, but uh, is, is a representation of this probability distribution. In this example, the click is basically a set of all um, uh, set of all nodes. So, so here is like x1 through x4 is basically this probability distribution has only one factor, and this is a slightly much a slightly much more fun example. So this is one click, this is another click, another click, another click. So we have four terms that gets normalized. So what is the interpretation of um, this click potential? So uh, let's start with a very simple example. Uh, we have three random variables, x1 through uh, x, y, and z. And if I condition on y, um, it is going to isolate x from each uh, y. So, well, if, if I had this graph gamma, this directed graph gamma, which, by the way, was equivalent of I equivalent of this, if you remember, this is a common cause, this is a common cause, this is a chain, and it's basically reverse chain. I can write the probability distribution of this as, as basically I can, I can factorize the joint probability distribution of that as PY, PX condition on Y, and PZ condition Y. Well, I can easily absorb these two to each other and using basic chain rule and, uh, and write this as P join XY, P Z given Y. So this, and also I can absorb Y into this one and write it as this comes here and the joint probability distribution Z and Y. I can also write this as a function, a non-negative function that is normalized, and a non-negative function which is normalized. Each of these four can be 5, 1. So remember that the factorization of this is just phi of x, y, phi 2 of y, z. So the phi can be any of these four, and phi 2 can be any of these four. The reason I'm showing you is that the take-home message uh, of, of, of this is that you cannot interpret each of these potential functions either as a marginal or CPD or conditional or joint probability distribution. All you can say is that the phi 1, phi 2 is some notion of compatibility goodness or happiness or affinity between random variables. You cannot uh, indirectly interpret those as uh, uh, probability distributions because it's just a function of between pair of uh, random variables. So there are various different ways to write this. Obviously, one of them is writing them as a maximum click. So in this graph that I'm showing you, is a UGM, is an under graph model between five random variables, A, B, C, and D. Of course, the maximal click is this one and this one. So a Gibbs distribution says that, well, I have one maximal click here, one maximal click here. And basically for each of these, then I can, um, I can introduce, I can define um, a, a potential. 
And so for a second, for, for sake of example, let's assume that each of the A, B, and C, and D are binary random variables and can take two values, zeros and one. And basically boils down to defining a tensor for three-dimensional uh, matrix of tensor of order three um, for each of these potential. And the joint probability distribution is basically multiplication of these factors and normalizing it. That's one way of showing this. Another way of saying that is to focus on pairwise. So I have a pair of A and B here, and A of D and, and, and D, and if, if they are sharing a random variable, this is A here, and I'm going to connect them. And if A and D are connect, uh, connected to each other because they are sharing D. And I can also write this probability distribution as, as a multiplication of the pairwise potential. You may say that, well, is there any difference between using one versus the other? So there are differences and they are not. So they are both equivalent in terms of IMAP. So IMAP, because the IMAP is coming from the graph, not the factorization, they both have the same set of independence. But one ha is richer than the other one. So example, you can, using pairwise potential, you cannot incorporate the, uh, basically the tree sum connection or correlation or dependencies between random variables because it's only... It only has a pairwise terms, not uh, the, the terms that involve three random variables. So the previous representation, this one, is richer in terms of representing the dependencies. But because the independencies are coming from the graph, and the graph are the same in both of them, they have the same IMAP. So you may ask, when should I use one versus the other one? Well, it, it's somewhat a design choice. So if you prefer the, three, uh, um, uh, the, the full click one, although you may not appreciate this in, in this simple example, you see that you have more parameters. So you have eight parameters here to represent a, a, a factors that are represent only three random variables that each of those get two values. And you may, you can convince yourself that if you have a lot of clicks of high order clicks, by high order clicks, I mean, th this is big number, not only two, two, three more, or like this number of states are big. So you need a lot of parameters to represent the click, to represent the potential. And that may cause you trouble uh, during the training time that we will discuss in the following uh, in, in the in the in the, in the, in the following uh, classes but at the same time it gives you more flexibilities to incorporate uh, the dependencies so another canonical representation is basically uh, using this that we not only we incorporate pairwise uh, uh, not only we can, we can incorporate pairwise which is which are these terms we also uh, incorporate the unary terms and the clicks. Well, you, you probably noticed that um, these term, this sort of representation, which is canonical representation, is, uh, does not have any advantage over the, the maximum click one. But the reason I'm showing you here is that uh, basically you can combine this one that is has only pairwise representation with this one so what does it mean it means that i can also come up with another representation that has um unary term well let's also call this x1 x2 x3 x4 unary term and binary term
Well, this is still not as rich as, as the, maximum, the canonical representation or the maximum clique, but it has a better parameterization than this one, because this one doesn't have a unitary uh, uh, term. So, um, finally, we have a formal theorem for that, which says that if arbitrary potential uh, ut uh, utilize the following formula, that uh, we can basically represent a joint probability distribution induced by the graph, and, uh, and if P is, is positive over, over the nodes of the graph, um, and if H is the I map for the P, then P is the Gibbs distribution, which is basically this form. So now that I showed you the, 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 the graph for um, undirected graph and directed graph, you may say that is there, is there any um, general form that can represent both directed graph and undirected graph? So, um, so it's basically that is that boils down to the notion of factor graph. So the factor graph is not yet a new notion of of representation for the graph, but it is a way that you can see the factors, you can read the factors uh, easily. Because as I told you, there are different design choices for the factors that you may prefer one versus the other one. Factor graph is is a way that you can read those easily. Uh, uh, from it. So let me introduce it in, in uh, formally. So the factor graph can be viewed as a bipartite graph that has two kinds of uh, the nodes, the square nodes and the round nodes. The, the, the round nodes are basically random variables and the square nodes are basically factors or the function. So here I'm showing you an example. So let's say that I have a graph uh, of four uh, probability distribution of four random variables, and this joint probability distribution is basically multiplication of this. So the p x one through x two, x three and x four is basically f x one, x two, and x four. So this function accepts two arguments. This function accepts two arguments, so on and so forth. So you can view it as a bipartite graph. And here you have random variables, and you, here you have factors. Um, so, so of course, it I define as a as a bipartite, uh, bipartite graph. But there is nothing that can stop me to. Uh, restructure these nodes and factors in a way that are even more easily readable. So let me give you an example. So here we start with, with the example that I showed you earlier uh, of four random variables. This, this, this factor graph corresponds to the design choice of the maximal click. That there is a function that is that accepts x1 x2 and x4 and there is another function that accept x x4 x2 and x3 and this factor graph is uh, correspond to another design choice that only correspond to uh, binary uh, terms so you can easily represent both of these design choices with the factor graph so you will see an application of the factor graph when we discuss uh, message passing in the following in the, in the following classes. And of course, the good things about that is that it's not just limited to undirected graphical model. Uh, you can also represent directed graphical model using factor graph. So here is an example. So here I have. A directed graph called model that I can write the joint distribution as as p x one through x five as p x one p x two p 
x3 given x1 and 2 and so on and so forth and each of these terms correspond to the one factor this one correspond to this factor this correspond to this factor this correspond to this factor and and of course you can redraw this graph as a bipartite but this is much easier to read so basically the factor graph gives you a way to represent both UGM and DGM and the difference here is that while well, the fa these functions in the in the uh, in, a, in a, uh, this function in the factor graph are normalized while the 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 DG and the UGM are not necessarily uh, normalized. So let me give you a few a practical example of the graphical model. Uh, um, so if you remember, so we had this Gibbs form of Gibbs distribution for undirected graph called Mao, and I, I called uh, this non-negative function um, potential function. So one way to make uh, to um, to make our life easier is that well, I can if if this is just uh, the only requirement for that is to be non-negative. I can rewrite this function as exponential of of another function that is basically can take positive and negative value. So this is always not negative. Well, assuming that it can go to infinity, can become zero too. Uh, so, but the reason so there is other than um, computational convenience, it is also physical correspondence to this as well. So all of these notions. Many of these notions are originally coming from physics, and and if you probably have noticed that I, I, I call this potential. So if we call this potential, this uh, term that comes inside of this potential term can be viewed as an as an energy. So you can one can define the total energy of the system as the sum of the energy because if you notice that. I have a bunch of exponential terms multiplied by each other, so their energy gets summed. And you, if you want to find an assignment over the state that achieves maximum potential, is as, as if that you are um, uh, looking for the state with minimum energy. So, so far we haven't talked about different ways that we can parameterize this way one of the very powerful ways to parameterize this kind of probability distribution is called uh, log linear models that basically defines the energy as the inner product between a feature function that's here and a parameters so you can define your feature function however you want and uh, you can view it uh, this feature function can, can, for example, come from um, some information that you have in a uh, in the context of your problem, or you can learn it, for example, with with the deep learning and methods like that. So, what are the advantages that? Um, so, examples of that are, uh, for example, the Boltzmann machine, which is coming from the physics. I won't don't want to go through the detail of. Um, the the physical notions of um, the Boltzmann machine. Well, for first reason because I'm not a physicist, but let's for just to have very um, very crude idea about that is that let's say that you want to model the state of four atom atoms that get two states zero and one. So let's say for example there are spin there the, those are representing the different spins. Uh, of, of these atoms and you want to see what is the most stable of this system and all of these atoms are in the vicinity of each other and they, they, they interact with each other so uh, so the inter interaction term between them uh, so are represented as xi and xj they, when they uh, and the, the, the value of the each state zero and one can be represented with this term. So you can view this as a unary term, and this one as a binary term. So, so 
basically theta i's and alpha i's are parameters of this system that explain how this system works so the energy of this function is basically this term that's basically just a quadratic form and can be written as follows so if you want so if 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 i give you this uh, the values of the theta and alphas uh you can you can find you can basically come up with the most stable state of the system or minimum energy simply by ma by minimizing this energy which is equivalent of maximizing the uh, the probability distribution so by you can find out the maximum state of x1 to x4 the maximum assignment of this probability distribution given a parameter by minimizing the energy which is basically you know saying the same thing We just entail solving this uh, quadratic function. Of course, this is not an easy problem because x x's here are not continuous; these are discrete. But basically, gives you um, the idea. So another extension of that extension of that is um, a so-called icing model that basically nodes are arranged in. Uh, regular uh, topo the regular topology this is something that maybe 10 20 years ago we used quite a bit for denoising of images because you can view each of these nodes as a uh, um the, the each of the, the pixels on a screen and the the, the connections are basically the, the um, pixels in a, next to each other and the state of that would be, for example, doesn't have to be two states. You can, for example, do the, for, use it for segmentation uh, and uh, different segments. So, um, why am I showing you this? Because I want to show you that you can use uh, similar modes to, to for a task such as segmentation. Of course, like nowadays, we are not using this. We are using much more advanced models, but... You can view this as a building block of 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 the many uh, of the current method that's based on um, graphical model. Another example that I want to show you is um, the restricted Boltzmann machine. So one of the the beauties of the RBM is that so 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 the application of the RBM or to basically summarizing the data set, for example, it takes data set into some uh, lower dimensional space, so which is the hidden space. So this is something that you don't know. So you have some observed random variables, which is basically a text that you have seen. So let's say that I've given you an article from, let's say, New York Times, and I'm representing X as a one-hot representation, and let's say I'm asking you to... Uh, uh, represented in the in topics for example politics uh sport so on and so forth those are the the the, the latent space that they are not observed the, bu the beauty of our um, um, rbm is that it's a specific form of the graphical model that um, instead of so that allows um, efficient inference or efficient sampling of the joint probability distribution. So all so the, the 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 general form of probability distribution consists of bunch of unary term over x's, which are this term, bunch of unary term over h's, which are this term, and interaction between them. So you may say that why um, this is interesting. That the reason is interesting is that uh, these factors are marginally dependent but when i condition on x the joint probability distribution of h h the, by design by the joint probability distri distribution of hi can be can be written as a full factorized form which means that if i condition on x if i'm given x each of these h's become independent why is it interesting because if i want to generate a pair of h and x 
for my later use later on when I talk about the inference, I can I can think about the Gibbs sampling approach that we'll introduce it later on, that I can first sample from X, substitute it in this form, sample from H, and generate X. And basically keep going between these two states and in, uh, and and generate sample from the joint X and, and Y. So this basically allows an efficient way of sampling the joint probability distribution. Another canonical examples of uh, undirected graphical models are CRF uh, or uh, conditional random field. So let's say that um, I'm giving you a, a, a sentence and I want to label words based so I, I want to do um, I want to label words whether they, those are verb adverb adjective so on and so forth so of course my label depends on a word on a, on a word itself so for example if I see, if I um, see a word uh, that let's say that uh, says Alice so Alice cannot be a verb but there are some of the words uh, that are ambiguous. Sometimes, based on the location that they are in a sentence, can be adverb, can be adjective, and so on and so forth. So it's not just based on the word itself. So that hopefully uh, can induce this uh, idea in your brain that, well, there should be some sort of like interaction term in this graph. Um, so the reason, so, so the re, so, but here, because the sentences are, the sentence is given and you only care about the labeling of, of the word, you only care about the, the, the conditional property distribution. So let's say that Y is my labeling and X is the sentence, is, is a series of the sentences that I've seen. I only care about modeling this, uh, conditional term I don't care about this I only care about this so um, and this is an, one of the examples uh, that um, undirected graphical model can be useful and so here I'm using the the log linear model that I showed you earlier that is basically my factors are these factors that are all defined arbitrarily so so your fc's are coming from it, it, it uh, the sentence that you have seen all of the all of the sentence that you all of the words in the sentence that you have seen and a specific label that you have so and then it's up to you to define your feature based on each of the labels so for example so if i have um um so it says the cat jumps on a dog or something like that. And I want to label those as subject, verb, uh, object, and so on and so forth. I can define a specific feature. So given this, which is my X, I can define my feature, given X, for each of these labels that are my Y. This is something that I want to infer from this. Uh, differently so 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 my my graph would be this this and this so i can define my features so separately so uh, let's say that i'm going to define this as this is my x's this is my y and my clicks are this click and this click and for each of these I can define different features and this can de depends on the label that it gets so for example let's, for sake of example is that Y can only take three labels subject verb and object so I can have a features that are defined for SS S V 
So these are my binary features and I can have features that are defined by S. So based on the sentence and based on, on, on the verb, uh, based on the label, you can define different features. You, you're going to see more examples of that in the next uh, sessions. Okay, so to summarize, uh, we talked about undiagonal graphical model that represent the relatedness or coupling or happiness of the pair of random variables. We told you that you shouldn't interpret this in a causal sense. And uh, we, show, we showed you a general form of the undirected graph called MAL that is basically Gibbs distribution. And we talked about the notion of the independence and we showed you a couple of examples of that in the real world. Um, right after the causal MAL, we are going to talk about um, the exact inference on direct and undirected graph called MAL, which later on will be used for learning the parameters for both directed and undirected graphical model. Thank you.